Uh, we are here for another virtual photo walks, and uh, I'm uh, doing this walk from University of Pittsburgh's McGovern Institute for Regenerative Medicine. Uh, McGovern Institute for Regenerative Medicine has the most ambitious uh, regenerative uh, program in the nation because uh, for us, for scientists, uh, clinical translation is almost everything. And uh, here at McGovern, we have the opportunity to work with the preclinical scientists and clinicians and also engineers. So there is a perfect combination of these three disciplines uh, to provide the most up-to-date and uh, groundbreaking research. So uh, this institution has been um, established in 1990s, early 1990s, as a part of University of Pittsburgh. And currently, as I mentioned, this is uh, one of the biggest regenerative uh, medicine program in the nation. And we have basically three different uh, core businesses here. Uh, one of them is all about uh, the artificial organs, mostly prosthetic materials. And also, as a second um, core business, we are working on the stem cell technologies, which we're going to talk today, uh, mostly. And then uh, the other uh, core business here about uh, that we, our uh, scientist colleagues working here is just to work with the cellular engineering, uh, genetic modifying, and using some scaffold technologies um, uh, and use some modified cells to provide artificial organ development. I would like to show you this picture uh, because uh, I couldn't pass without mentioning uh, Mr. William McGowan's name on here. Uh, Mr. McGowan is a well-renowned uh, Pennsylvania native. Uh, he was a businessman and unfortunately he had a very severe heart attack in 1986. And as you can appreciate, those years were the early days of heart transplantation and we didn't really have a lot of experience in those years. And he was super urgently listed for a transplantation and uh, then he, uh, the, the organ was not available, unfortunately. So he had to wait on the list quite a long time, but uh, fortunately he had a successful heart transplantation in 1987. And uh, he lived another five years. Unfortunately, he had another heart attack, and then uh, we just he passed away in 1992. And at the same same year, he a charitable fund was established, uh, William McGovern Charitable Fund, and currently uh, this fund is supporting most of the activities uh, in the uh, uh, McGovern Institute, and that's why uh, I couldn't pass to you know. Uh, Tribute his name and uh, just uh, how to tell how grateful we are uh, to him and his foundation. So now we're gonna just move to Dr. Gerlach's lab. Uh, York Gerlach is uh, a colleague here working with us. He joined McGovern team in 2003. He's been working on the stem cells and artificial organ development, which we're gonna talk today. Uh, we're going to ask uh, questions about his current research projects and also uh, his cutting-edge technology for uh, treating burn patients. Uh, what I would like to do is, as uh, he just uh, will be very happy to answer questions, but I'm sure you may have some uh, invaluable comments and questions. So uh, I will be very happy to uh, direct your uh, comments and questions to the event web page because we are very sensitive to answer all those questions and to create a public awareness about the current stem cell research and the cutting edge technology. And now we are in uh, Dr. Gerlach. And then, uh, as you can see, this is a fantastic stem cell laboratory. He's going to introduce his uh, team to us shortly. And I would like to stop here and say hi to Dr. Okay. All right. 
Thank you very much for accepting our walk and us into their lab. And Dr. Gerlach, uh, would you like to tell us about your research, your team, and a brief history about your uh, mm -hmm. cutting edge research, please? Uh, we started working on three-dimensional perfusion cultures for stem cells um, already in Berlin, Germany. I moved 10 years ago to Pittsburgh and in our biorector group at the McGowan Institute in the University of Pittsburgh. Um, we are working with devices like this on a smaller scale or devices like that on a larger scale. Those are bioreactors and they are um, maintained in perfusion devices like the ones you see here. Um, those are little intensive care units. The bioreactor is warmed in a warming chamber. There are pumps for nutrition. There are pumps for circulation. There's this artificial lung like um, oxygen supply here. Um, those are devices in which cells can survive, can grow, um, can be made available for cell transplantation, or such a device can be used as an extracorporeal um, liver support system. And could you please tell us a bit about these bioreactors, how they work, and how you just uh, create uh, new cells on those bioreactors? So the devices are incorporated into these machines, um, cells are inoculated, and then depending on the organ, for example, with liver cells, um, our research right now, um, together with Eva Schmelzer and all the other colleagues of the team, um, is um, geared towards um, creating a better environment in which the cells can grow to a large extent, making them available for cell transplantation therapies. For example, in end-stage liver disease, cell injections to enhance the the metabolic active cell mass is of interest. But once cells are in such a bioreactor, once liver cells are in such a bioreactor, you can also use such a machine as, an, um, as a machine like a dialysis machine for the kidney. Um, you can use such a machine for a liver support um, purpose. We developed those bioreactors already a while ago. We used them as an extracorporeal liver support system. We had excellent clinical results. But the cells to be used in such devices are not available in sufficient numbers. That is um, part of our research um, to increase the number of, of available cells by letting those cells hopefully grow to, larger ma uh, to a larger cell mass in such a bioreactor. The bioreactor group focuses in general devices for the culture of stem cells, um, devices in which cells can be made available for therapies, um, but also as an extra corporeal organ or as a tool for, for more basic oriented research. Excellent. And I know that you're working with other institutions as a multi-institutional research. Mm -hmm. So would you please give us some information about that also? I started that work in Berlin, Germany with our Berlin group. Um, we have a very, um, very strong collaboration. The University of Pittsburgh and the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center has a network, an international network. Um, of transplantation centers of other medical centers which is which are managed through UPMC and um, in at UPMC Italy in Palermo on Sicily we're working with the group of Bruno Rudelli at ISMED um, on transplantation studies um, we're using hepatic stem cells um, we are isolating them and we are um, performing clinical studies on the opportunity of injecting hepatic progenitor or stem cells um, into the patient as an as an help in end-stage liver disease. So that work is done on an international level between um, UPMC Italy in Palermo and, and here um, in Pittsburgh. And with the Berlin Group, we work on um, stem cell research, on liver support, but also on um, skin cell research. OK, now I would like to f come to the skin research and your uh, state-of-the-art burn treatment uh, with stem cells. Uh, I know that uh, healing from the burns requires several operations, several long treatments for years and years, and at the end of the day, you end up by having a scar tissue. And also, it's a current prog uh, problem, not only in our daily lives, but it's also a nation's problem. It's the US Army's problem. Soldiers come with different levels of uh, injuries, burn defects. And some kids have some burn defects, too. So burn is a very common problem. And it may happen to any of us. So I'm very excited to talk about your uh, most recent research about this uh, 
uh, burn treatment and your skin uh, treatments. Okay. So again, our focus, the focus of our group is to work on technologies which can utilize stem cells. And in the area of skin, we were also interested um, in utilizing the, the, the adult skin stem cells of the patient to treat um, his own body on surface areas of the skin which are burned. Um, let's move around. Um, I'll show you a different area of the lab. Sure. This is um, Chris. He's working on our liver um, stem cell project. And this is Matt. He's working on our um, skin stem cell project. And with Matt, we're going, um, we're going a little further into a different um, area of our lab. Matt is working in this area. Um, we have a, a, a clean space where cell cultures, including uh, skin cell cultures, can be worked with. Um, over there, if you turn your camera all the way around, you see further, you see a microscope, and you see boxes. And in those boxes, um, we are um, we are storing the material which is required for clinical patient um, patient therapy. And if you turn further into the same direction, those are um, boxes for each patient therapy in the in the in the skin project. Um, we have a box prepared already in advance, so we take one of those boxes. Our team met. Um, Pat, Roger, um, they're, they're somewhere else in the lab. I don't know where they are right now. <laughs> we are grabbing one of those boxes um, together with this box here. And um, that box contains um, the materials we need for the um, skin cell transplantation. Maybe a brief um, introduction of Matt on what, what is done in order to enable a pa patient therapy. Uh, yes, my name is Matt Young. Uh, so what we do normally when uh, the hospital calls us for the treatment of a burn patient, we go and take a small graft of uh, non-burned skin and then do a cell isolation on that and use this spray device to then spray those cells over the wound. Uh, without that, uh, the cells would need to migrate in from the periphery, and uh, this really accelerates the healing process. Um, mostly what I do in the lab is uh, growing human skin cells in order to uh, test for optimization of different parts of our protocol, uh, compatibility with different wound dressings and that sort of thing. Thank you very much. Would Thank you. you. Like to show us your skin gun, please. Uh, have you not seen this? I'm, I'm uh, working on some. Uh, okay. Okay. Modifying some prototypes. Okay. And uh, what I would like to tell you is, uh, we just uh, we just uh, we prepared a uh, we prepared a. Uh, lab situation here for you because there is a specific setting required to show you how the stem cells are sprayed through the stem cell gun. So, uh, and after that, uh, as Dr. Gerlach mentioned, that this stem cell treatment is available for the clinical use right now. There's a clinical trial going on in parallel to the lab setting. And uh, we also have some recordings of the patients which shows their experience on those stem cells after their unfortunate you know, uh, accidents or burn defects. So um, I would like to show those videos. And then uh, after this, we can just go through your comments and possible uh, 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 questions. Uh, so you can just direct them either to me or to the team by a reactor group. So I'm just going to uh, leave you with the Spiro recording right now. Uh, 
So my thought was I would ask um, Roger how we characterize the, the skin stem cells in these cell isolations we okay. um, isolate. Sure. And that sure. would be it, right? Said, okay. Yeah. Because okay. we're just showing now the yeah. preparation and uh, spraying the software mm -hmm. recorded. special enzymatic uh, procedure where we take a biopsy. Um, the biopsy is exposed to enzymes, and with those enzymes we can isolate single cells out of the patient's skin. Our focus is the isolation of the stem cells which regenerate the skin, and those sprayed stem cells then help to regenerate and close the wound. Uh, may I ask what's your uh, clinical experience on, the, uh, on this study and how is your uh, results so far? We started the project in Berlin, Germany um, with my transition to Pittsburgh and I now work together with UPMC and the UPMC Burn Center, Dr. Alan Krokos. Um, so far in the Burn Center with Dr. Krokos and Dr. Zimbiki, um, around 20 patients are treated here in Pittsburgh. Um, we had some technical issues, it didn't work always perfectly, um, but in situations where clinically and um, technically everything worked fine, we have excellent clinical results. Thank you very much and we look forward to seeing your skin gun and your procedure. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to pass the microphone to Dr. Gerlach again. And uh... Matt was treated in an acute situation. And um, I think it, it is important to mention um, with the technology we developed, we cannot treat chronic skin wounds, um, scars, or even wounds which are already several weeks old. Um, we need a freshly bleeding wound in order to treat um, um, the wound with the cell spray. Burns first degree don't need a treatment, they heal spontaneously. Down to the bone or to the muscle, and nothing is left, also not the connective tissue under the, stim, uh, under the skin, including the dermis. In that case, also skin cell spray transplantation doesn't make sense. Um, we believe that the um, stem cells we provide are very important. We do stem cell research on the upper skin, the epidermal skin, skin cells, but also on the dermis. And we hope that on a long run, we can also offer a therapy for third degree burns. Um, I would like to introduce to Roger. Roger is just coming back from Spain. He's originally from um, Barcelona. And Roger, as a cell bio biologist, is working on the stem cell characterization of the cells we are spraying for the skin therapy. Thanks, uh, Dr. Galak. Um, as you already said in the in the video, so we are using like a two enzymatic step uh, isolation process. So most of the time, the the biopsy comes from the patient, uh, but before to use the cell spray on, on patients, we had to characterize characterize the the cells that we isolate. So to perform that. We did uh, some uh, gene expression of the cells that we isolate, like flow cytometry. We analyzed every, every cell. And also like combination of a molecular biology techniques, like a monofluorescence, we can determine the number of stem cells that we can isolate. So we determine using all of the techniques that we can isolate around like 15, 30% of the cells are stem cells. It means that all of these cells are going to be spray on the patient, and then they're going to repopulate the skin. So technically, we're using the same stems from the patient and to uh, regenerate the, the entire wound. So this is like a long process that it takes uh, here in McGowan Institute in a collaboration with the Mercy Hospital 
So the combination of all of that uh, technology allows us uh, to understand what's going on, what's happening in the in the wound, and to improve for the patients. The clinical collaboration with Dr. Ellen Korkus and Dr. Jennifer Zambicki at the UPMC Mercy Hospital um, Burn and Trauma Unit is excellent. And um, I think in the video material um, you um, showed, um, they were also um, visible um, spraying the cells in the OR. Thank you very much for the opportunity um, to explain our work, and I hope it was interesting. And uh, thank you very much, Dr. Garlak, for joining us on this very exciting virtual photo walk today. I would like to thank you again and your team for giving us the most recent up-to-date information about your outstanding research. And we'll look forward to seeing uh, the uh, success stories coming up in the future, too. And uh, I would like to thank everybody for joining us today. And we are going to upload some images and some videos on the event website. And if you would like to ask any questions or just do your comments, just feel free. And we will be very happy to uh, try to answer those comments and questions. And uh, I would like to thank you again for the Virtual Photo Walks team providing this exciting walks today. And thank you very much again for being with us. Bye. 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 Bye.